Coach Emma. Thank you for joining us for our second session of Exos Eats. As Matt told us already, I'm going to be doing the very active plate. So we have three different sessions here. Um, each one a little bit different, but still using the same guidelines and principles. So very active plate. Um, we're going to learn today how to fuel for activities, specifically kind of more high intensity um, exercise or just activities throughout your day. So if we think about this as uh, a circle graph, think about your very active plate as half of your plate is going to be carbs. All right, so that's our fuel portion. And then we're going to have fourth of our plate, colorful, colorful produce. Um, so that's our fruits and veggies. And then the other fourth of that plate is going to be our lean proteins. So we get to be really creative with this. And so today I'm really excited. We're going to be doing a tempeh Buddha bowl. So if you saw in the handout of the recipe, lots of colors here. Um, it's also plant-based, but the beautiful thing about this is that you can add meat in there. Um, so I'd recommend probably chicken would go best as a substitute. Um, so I'm going to be educating you on the tempeh aspect of it and like kind of what that is, why I use that, um, and how it fuels me for my activities. Um, and then again, use whatever you like. This is not hardcore strict recipe here. All right. So I'm actually really excited about this one too because I use a lot of these ingredients, but I don't usually put them, I haven't made them into like a Buddha bowl before, so it's going to be fun for us. Um, so we'll start with the ingredients and then I'll get more into education after that as things are cooking. Um, so today we are going to start with um, the fuel, so the carbs. I'm going to start and cut up my sweet potato here. I already put on my oven to 375, so it's already preheated, ready to go. Um, I wanted to kind of cut some stuff up with you all and just kind of share the experience. So, um, again, sometimes you can buy them already cubed, but I'm trying to cut back on my plastic consumption. So, um, just buying regular Whole Foods is an awesome way to help with that. So, if you have the time, I would definitely recommend... Um, Again, buying your produce whole and I'm gonna cube my sweet potato so this is again where you get to get creative and have fun in the kitchen um, so again I just like cubes that's just how I am so and you can do it to your preference and this recipe that we're gonna do together today is typically about two servings so if you have somebody at home you want to share this with um, this would be a great recipe for you to, to enjoy together. Or if you just want leftovers for the next day, leftovers are usually better, uh, the next day. So, um, I already have my baking sheet set to the side, so I put some olive oil on them. So that's going to be a really awesome source of fat for us. So, go ahead, set your potatoes on there, evenly spread. All right. So be really careful when you cut your sweet potatoes. They're really hard. Um, making sure you have a nice sharp knife. Keeping those fingers out of the way though. Um, you wanna make sure also that your cubes aren't too big so they kind of cook through evenly and you don't have to take as long cooking here. Um, and if you have an air fryer, highly recommend using that for your sweet potatoes. Um, I recently got on an air fryer kick. So, we're gonna start here with our carbs. And I have my olive oil here. I always keep it in like a darker area so it preserves the olive oil. Um, if you leave your olive oil in the light, um, it makes it go bad faster, fun fact. So you're just gonna drizzle on your olive oil here and then just kind of shake it around to make sure it's evenly coated. And you can add salt, pepper, whatever you like. So, sweet potatoes are diced. I'm going to put those in the oven. Then we're going to go ahead and get into the rest of our um, the rest of our meal. So, those are in the oven. While that's cooking, it's going to take us probably 25, 30 minutes, maybe. It just depends. Um, I'm going to make the marinade for the tempeh. All right. So, um, I'm going to use this plastic thing so we can get all the tempeh in there. Let them soak. So for our marinade, 
Um, I have all my ingredients right here. We're gonna start with our peanut butter. Um, so you can use any kind of nut butter. Um, I just happen to have peanut butter and I like to stick with natural. There's just less ingredients. It's literally just salt and peanuts um, and some natural oils from the peanuts that will kind of rise up to the top. So don't be scared of that, just mix it in. So we're gonna use two teaspoon, teaspoons of our peanut butter. So again, you can use um, almond butter. There's a ton of nut butters now. So honestly, you can get a little creative with an experiment. All right, if you're not a peanut butter person, uh, I'm sure there's something else you can use. So after that, we're gonna add in our agave. So I like agave, you can use honey. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of our agave. I have light agave nectar. I know it's just fancy. Got this from Whole Foods. And everything I got here is from Whole Foods, but you can definitely get everything I got easily from any grocery store. Um, and it's very inexpensive too. So, all right, we're gonna add that. Then we have our tamari. So tamari is gonna be kind of like a soy sauce. So this is gonna be um, kind of a soy sauce taste. And we have three tablespoons here. And I got the light kind. Um, you can just do your preference. That's the beauty of cooking. And honestly, I'm getting very elaborate with my cooking here today. I usually am very simple, so pretty excited to see how this turns out, honestly. Um, all right, so we have our rice vinegar next. So just a regular kind of vinegar. Um, we're gonna add a teaspoon of that into the mix. And I like to use this Tupperware because um, you can shake it up and put the lid on, let it soak, get all the good flavors all over it. All right, and then you can add a little bit of garlic powder. So I actually left that in the seasoning cabinet. Always have a ton of this on hand, put it on everything. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it in there, honestly. A little bit more. All right, so now we're just gonna mix it up. I'm just gonna use what I've already been using. We're gonna mix it up here. Um, and then this is gonna be what our tempeh goes into. And I know you all are so excited to know what tempeh is. All right, so it comes in this nice little package. There's a few different kinds of tempeh. Um, all it really is is compact and fermented soybeans. Um, and it's just compacted into this tight structure. Let me get my water. And it's boiling. All right. So it comes in this package here. And I got, let's see, the three, ga three grain tempeh. Um, there's a few different kinds. And then if you go to Whole Foods, there's a million different kinds. So just get the regular kind. You don't need to go crazy here. This is gonna soak up all the flavor. All right, and then from there, it's gonna dice it into, or cut it into strips, or you can cut it into cubes. I'm gonna do cubes today. So I usually do uh, strips, but we're gonna go all out today. So you're just gonna add your cubes into there. Um, and again, the consistency, I'm not sure if you can really see, it's just really compacted um, and it's firm. So unlike tofu, it's a little bit different than that. I know most people don't like that. Um, I prefer this. And the cool thing about this is it's about 18 to 19 grams per serving of pro like protein per serving. Uh, so high protein here. What you're going to do is add shake it up and let it sit. All right, so while that's happening, um, we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of our carbs uh, on the stove. So farro is the next thing we're gonna do. So we have our potatoes, we have our protein here. Farro is um, an ancient grain. Um, it's just like brown rice. And what we're gonna do is I already have my pot um, boiling. So I have boiling water, I did a cup of water. I'm gonna do half a cup of farro. Um, just because I'm doing two servings here today. Um, so, what you're gonna do is get your pot to a boil. You're gonna add your farro, let it cook for about 10 minutes. All right, so you're gonna let it kind of boil down out of the simmer. All right. So, you can get this at any store as well. I haven't seen it at Food Line before, but Whole Foods and um, Whole Foods and here's Teeter definitely has it. So, we're gonna let 
this marinade for a little bit longer. And while we're letting this marinade, um, we're gonna kind of cut up the rest of our veggies. So I have already have my shredded carrots here. Um, and I have my edamame. I put them in a nice little glass bowl. So you can buy the kind with shells on it. Um, or you can just be a little bit lazy and buy the ones that are already shelled for you. Whatever, however much work you want to do. So then we have this huge thing of red cabbage. I couldn't find anything smaller. So highly recommend if you do cook a lot and you buy stuff like this, um, make sure you have a lot of people to cook for because, um, you don't want this to go to waste. So I'm just gonna kind of cut a little bit less than half here, if I can get through it, kind of huge. Here, I'm just gonna start at the end here. So again, I'm not gonna need a ton of this here. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna chop that up into nice little fine pieces. So really, I really don't need a lot of this. And this is gonna add a really nice purple color at the end. So again, be careful of your fingers. This is gonna last me for a really long time. All right, awesome. So again, this meal is actually super easy. Um, it's a great meal to also meal prep. It could be a, a lot of work up front, um, but the ingredients, they'll last for a while. So you're just gonna get that nice and finely chopped up. Go over a few times here. All right, so toss that off to the side here. So now that our tempeh is kind of been marinating for a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven as well. Make sure it's all evenly coated. Um, I wish you guys could see this, it actually looks really good. So, I already greased my pan here as well. I'm just gonna evenly spread it out. All right, gonna toss that in the oven. already done everything's in the oven so now that we're letting everything kind of cook and in the oven um, I'm gonna chat about what the heck is going on here so as I mentioned earlier we have our carbs um, and a lot of people there's a lot of fear around carbs and especially half a plate of carbs um, this is all in relation to you and your body what you need what you do throughout the day so for me example I love to do endurance activities big into biking and swimming so I, recover, I require a lot of carbs, um, and it's easy to do being plant-based. Most of your stuff is carbs. So in my case, I need to really be focused on getting enough protein, and that's why I love to use tempeh. Um, so for those of you who enjoy meat, I would definitely, again, recommend some chicken, um, getting, your clean, getting a nice clean product. Um, the less processed food, the better. So I have to be really careful about not getting really processed uh, fake meats. That's why I stick with this type of stuff that I show you all. Um, so again, half a plate of carbs here. We have our sweet potatoes and our farro. So really awesome, to, a way to produce some fast energy. So the carbs are broken down to glucose and then that's what our body uses for energy. So our brain needs that in order to function well. So you may have experienced times where you have brain fog um, and that's not a fun time. And that's kind of when you don't have enough carbs maybe. So um, if, you've, if you've experienced that and then you get some carbs in, then you know, hey, this is really fast energy. So, um, and it's really important for sports performance. So if you're about to work out, you don't wanna eat a bunch of like heavy greens or like heavy proteins. Um, so really fast, awesome way to get some energy into your system. Then we move down to protein and that's really important for um, hormone function, production, and immune function as well. So um, there's a lot of good gut bacteria in our body, so that's what carbs are good for. They produce, they help regulate our gut and our bowels, um, and then protein, if you have the good amount, um, helps feed that gut bacteria. So um, a lot, there's a lot of talk when we get down to protein about having 
too much um, and it's really hard for our body to digest a lot of protein. So making sure that we get about like a half to one gram per pound of our body weight a day. Um, so I'll let you all do the math there. Um, I'm not here to recommend you how much to do. Um, and then we're gonna move down to our produce. So all of our colors here, I also have a huge bag of kale. Um, this is half of a thing I got from the store. So I keep them, these, keep them in these green bags because they just stay fresher, longer. Um, I think you can find these green bags on Amazon. So if you have a problem with your spinach or like your greens wilting really fast, I highly recommend buying one because it's been saving my life um, a lot and a lot of money too. You save money so you don't throw out your stuff. Um, so produce, lots of micronutrients in these little guys here, all right? Um, it's really big in vitamin B's. So vitamin B is really great for energy production of the brain and it also repairs the DNA in our body. So doing a lot of awesome stuff here today. Um, let's go ahead and check in on our stuff. So our pharaoh is actually almost done. And our sweet potatoes are looking good. All right, awesome. So where I want to go from next is kind of clean up our area. We're gonna get um, our plate out here. So I'm gonna plate this all for you in a little bit just so you can see what um, it's supposed to look like. And actually, before we do that, let's go and make our dressing. So um, everything that we use for the marinade, we can also use for our dressing, which is really cool. So we're gonna use five tablespoons of tahini. So if you've never heard of tahini, um, it kind of has like a nut smell. It's kind of like a nut butter almost. And it is high in calories, but it's really good in healthy fats. So this is where we're going to get our fats from. This is what helps um, with protect. So a lot, um, the word fat and the word carbs are usually feared a lot. Um, and they're actually really important in our diet. So we're going to make sure we get that in this meal. So we're going to put five tablespoons in our little mason jar. All right. And another thing, another thing, um, I love using mason jars um, when I'm cooking. Again, cutting down on plastic is a really big thing. Um, and they're really easy to reuse, um, wash, and they're cute. So very aesthetically pleasing. Also, if you all have any questions for me about any of this, um, please feel free to put that in the chat box as I go through this. I'm also happy to answer any of your questions when it comes to um, me not eating meat how do I get all the nutrients that I need? Um, it's been about two years for me now, and it's just kind of been an exploration for me. I didn't start off that way. I definitely started off like one meal a day, uh, and then I kind of transitioned that way. It's been really interesting ever since. So, uh, for next what we're going to go is into our tamari. So, just a little bit of tamari here. I'm going to go one and a half tablespoons. We're gonna put that in there. Good, and then we're gonna go with our vinegar. And um, for the kale, this is your choice. Um, moving to the kale, it's kind of the last thing on the recipe. Um, and you can steam it if you'd like. So some people like it raw, some people like it steamed. It's really up to you. So we're gonna add our one tablespoon of rice vinegar, and then we're gonna dilute that with some water. Don't worry, I use filtered water. So we're just gonna mix that up really good. All right, and our grains are done. All right, so this is gonna be our dressing here. Mix that up really good. All right, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our grains since they're done. So what farrow looks like, um, 
they look like a big grain. Um, I wish you could see these, but the texture is just kind of, um, they're kind of hard, kind of grainy, um, but they're packed with fiber. All right. And again, an awesome source of really quick carbs. So um, when I plate this, I'm going to go probably half with this and then go half with our sweet potatoes. Talk a little bit more about uh, carb choices, um, specifically in terms of fiber-rich uh, carb choices versus something like white rice or yeah. other alternatives. Yeah. Um, so when I say like fiber-rich, this is just kind of like your more like your apples, your brown rice, um, like starchier stuff. Um, and the other stuff, the other type of fiber is going to be like your white sugar stuff like that. That just kind of doesn't break down very well in the body. Um, so for me, I, for people who like to enjoy plants um, and just stuff like that fast, um, fast carbs are going to be, again, your brown grains um, and your white ri and the white rice will break down differently in the body. Um, hmm. But again, the fiber is just going to help that digested, digestion in your gut. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and get the rest of our stuff out. All right. So here we have our sweet potatoes. And it's kind of your choice how you want, how long you want to keep them in there. Uh, if you like them brown, keep them in there a bit longer. Uh, but these look pretty good to me. So we're just going to add a fourth of the plate here. Proteins. All right, everyone. Almost done here. Now we gotta add in our colors. So let's go sprinkle in some edamames. And we go with our carrots here. So again, this is our prevent portion of um, our nutrition. So great for our immune function here. I'm going to put on our cabbage. And you can put on as much as you want. So whatever you like best. All right. And then at the very end, you can drizzle on some dressing. Um, and then we'll add in the kale as well. So kale is kind of optional here. It'll fit better in the bowl, honestly. Um, but here is a view of my plate here. You can see... Half of it's carbs, so we have our farro, we have our sweet potatoes, here we have a fourth of it of um, all of our greens, or our color, so prevent, um, and then we have our build, our protein, so we have our tempeh. Um, yeah, so then I'm going to go ahead and put it in a bowl. I'll show you, I like the base with a lot of greens, that's just how I am, um, but if this were to be more of a pre-workout type of thing, I would eat this way before, you, maybe an hour or so before you work out just because it is a lot of carbs. Um, if you're going to do it after your workout, um, I would definitely add more greens. So, to scoop everything in there. If it fits in my bowl. There we go. Now at the very top, I like to add my protein in. This is how I always plate stuff. All right. So the very last thing we want to do is just add a little bit of dressing on there. Just 
gonna sprinkle it on. Alright, so this is how I prefer to eat my foods. Um, it's here in this bowl, everything fits perfectly. So again, we have all of our food groups here. Um, and again, this is our, for our more active populations, but of course, um, it just depends on what you need to help you feel good throughout your day. Um, so I highly recommend you all trying this, giving tempeh a chance. Um, and I wanna know what you think about that. So please let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to answer those for you. Um, if you try it, give us a shout out. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for joining me today. So I'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Um, if we don't have any questions, then I'll let Matt take it from here. Uh, well, the uh, chat's been pretty quiet, so we don't necessarily have any, any questions, but we're certainly open um, to it. The uh, kind of question I, I hear a lot about vegetarian um, and or vegan meal plans, you talked about kind of getting that protein. Um, so if you were to say kind of a, you know, three or four different options of what you would normally go to for your proteins, um, cause I think that's what uh, prevents a lot of people from getting more into kind of plant-based diet. So from a practical sense, what do you usually go for? Yeah, that's actually an awesome question. And I, that kind of is what deterred me for so long. Um, but obviously number one is tempeh. I love it. Very lean source of protein, um, minimal amount of sodium, minimal amount of carbs in it as well. So that's a great source for people. Um, tofu is questionable for some people on other studies, um, or people believe like the estrogen part of it's not great. Um, but there are studies done on that that I'm actually looking into. So it's kind of like a controversial topic. Um, then there's like your beans and legumes. So then you have like, for example, lentils, black meat, beans are what I love and chickpeas. So I usually put those on top of my salads in addition to another choice of plant-based proteins. So for example, you can um, pair some rice with some beans that equals a complete protein. So it has that whole amino acid profile that you need. Um, a lot of plant-based protein options are incomplete. Um, but if you pair them the right way, then you get all those essential amino acids that you need. Um, one thing I would say is just be really careful about the processed meats. Um, a lot of that stuff just has extra stuff you don't need, and then that's when I think it gets a really bad reputation. Um, so just be smart with your choices, do your research. Um, keep experimenting as well. You might not like the things that I like, and that's totally fine. Um, but I've been able to sustain my active lifestyle doing it. But you know, there's always a, there's always so many options. So um, those are probably probably the main sources for me. And I do I do eat eggs and stuff. So yeah. So there's a lot out there. Um, but again, it's not for everyone. So great question. Yeah, well, that was very informative. Um... Trina brings a good point about um, kind of what you're saying with your meal plan is typically, you know, pretty high carb. Um, so has there been times that, you know, maybe you haven't been as active or, you know, if you're um, kind of in a recovery phase or something where your activity level is less than, you know, what it is now and that, you know, do you find that balancing that kind of high carb um, kind of diet style is you know, challenging or do you make any kind of adjustments for a, a low training period? Yeah, that's also another awesome question and I definitely struggled with that in the beginning, um, especially as I was transitioning into this, I was dealing with an injury, so my exercise was way down um, and so of course my appetite wasn't as great. Um, but I did find that I ate a lot less carbs when I did that. So I was more leafy green um, and then lean protein choices. Um, um, there's also another protein called seitan and I haven't tried that yet, but it's actually like a dough and you rinse it from its carb, um, carb chains, or I can't remember how exactly what it is, but 
it's just like the proteins left of um, the starchy dough stuff. So that's something I'm really interested in trying. But yeah, as I was going through low periods, periods of not working out as much, um, I definitely found myself not eating as many carbs, but that also wasn't great for my body. So um, you learn the hard way, <laughs> definitely. That sounds very unique kind of food. Um, I've never heard of that myself, so I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I, I want to try it, honestly. I went to Whole Foods and it was there and I almost bought it, but I didn't. Um, but definitely highly recommend looking into it. It's like a really high source of protein. Um, yeah, definitely do a Friday morning fuel with it. I'd be interested in that. Um, our pal Mike uh, posted a link that he's, he hasn't tried it, but he was looking at it. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Zen B pasta? Zen pasta? Oh, okay. Have never heard of that? No, but there are a lot of, that's another thing, there's a lot of plant-based pastas or um, like lentil pasta uh, and um, ban bonza. Bonza has a really good pasta oh, yeah, too. Yeah, bonza, chickpeas. Yeah. So that's awesome. I love that. Oh uh, yeah, apparently it's it's made of yellow peas, 100% yellow peas. Okay. Oh, there's also this thing called Just Egg, and it's not egg at all. It's made from mung beans. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that. Not sure how I feel about it right now. Just stating what I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it tastes like egg. It's actually pretty good. A good alternative for um, some vegan there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's the, the beautiful thing about the, the age that we live in is, is people kind of explore new diets and explore, you know, all these different kind of foods and um, not necessarily just eating, uh, you know, whatever they find on the ground, but getting creative and, and kind of uh, manipulating these foods into other products, you know, using peas to make pasta or, you know, using... And, you know, soy to make a quote unquote meat. Um, so, and of course, you know, the impossible burgers and all that. So, I, I personally, I, I think it's just a, a wonderful time to really get into food and, um, you know, all the different diets going around out there. I think it's um, kind of lends itself to a lot of different experimentation and kind of getting to know what feels good in your body and, and, um, you know, my recommendation is just those that are looking into kind of specific diets, you know, like have some fun with it, try some new things, and at the end of the day, it's going to be whatever, you know, suits you well. So, um, Emma, you know, we really appreciate your uh, kind of outlook in, in your diet, um, being that vegetarian, that plant-based kind of option, um, and showing that, you know, you've been doing this for a few years now, and you're still going strong, getting you know, getting physically stronger and still finding creative ways to uh, kind of expand your your meals and um, the things that you cook. So uh, we thank you for that. Oh, uh, thank you, Matt. We'll take, <laughs> we'll take any other last-minute questions here before we wrap things up, kind of give everybody their afternoon back. Um, while, you're, while you're thinking, again, feel free to type it in the chat or just call it out. Um, but I'll... I'll take the, the moment to plug next week. We do have our third and final Exos Eats presentation. Um, it's going to be back in my area of town. So if you are around next Thursday, still at 3 p.m., we'll be tackling the, uh, the kind of performance you know, spread of those that are maybe a little less active or aiming to lose weight. So make sure that you... You tune in that one, mark your calendars. Again, we'll record it if you are not able to make it, uh, but definitely recommend making it live. So yes. next Thursday at 